The Honda Civic is to late Gen Xers and millennials what the Volkswagen Beetle was to early Gen Xers and baby boomers. Essentially, it's a rite of passage automobile. In other words, we all have a story involving a Honda Civic at one point or another in our lives. We either owned one or knew someone who did or went for a ride in one. There's a Honda Civic somewhere in our past. In my case, there are too many Honda Civic stories, but one which, say 25 years ago, I used to hang out with a lot of Volkswagen guys and owned a few myself, but we still had a really close buddy who had to have his Civic. And he was welcome, although the rivalry was fun, admittedly. Thing is, the Honda Civic has been one of the best-selling cars bar none in Canada and the US for decades, and it's understandable. It has been efficient, it's fun to drive, it's reliable, and for the most part, it was a fairly attractive small car. Now, over the last, say, 15 years or so, well, the automotive landscape and the purchaser has changed quite a bit. And obviously, if the Honda Civic is still the best-selling car in Canada and one of the best-selling cars in the US, it's because Honda has managed to up its Civic game. I mean, somewhere around, you know, 8th uh, generation, ninth generation, and 10th generation, uh, Honda designed a car that met expectations and in fact exceeded them because they were competing against small SUVs. And I have to say that now after spending a number of days with this all new 2022 11th generation Honda Civic, um, the A game is here. The competition, as I said, is fierce in the small car segment, uh, Corolla, Mazda 3, so on and so forth. But this is, and in, it's strange in a way for me to say this, the best Honda Civic, because in my mind, the Honda Civic will always be somewhere between the fourth and the sixth generation car. But to a purchaser who is, say, slightly, whatever comes after millennials, I don't know, uh, younger than I, uh, this is now the Honda Civic. Anyhow, that means that in the following video, we're going to do the usual walk around and take it for a spin. And I've essentially told you already what I feel or how I feel about this car. It is the best Honda Civic they've ever built, but it's also the least Honda Civic that they've ever built. Anyhow, let's do this. The all new 2022 11th generation Honda Civic is, look, there, there's no two ways about it is definitely a prettier car in my opinion than the 10th generation car that it replaces and it's got a lot more visual pizzazz than the 9th generation car uh, and now we come face to face with the fact that it now borrows a lot of visual styling cues from the honda accord meaning that it'll be difficult unless you're up close to figure out if it's an accord or a civic which in most cases is a really really good thing especially if you drive a honda civic everything about the car is just beautifully sorted i love the front end it's got it's got aggression but it's got elegance rolled into it one of the best parts about it is how long they've now made the hood they've done that by pushing back the a pillars by five centimeters i mean it's not a big distance but when you consider the overall size of the car which it's huge now the civic compared to like I said, my Civic between the fourth and sixth generation car. Uh, but look, I think you'll have to agree with me. There is no bad angle on this car. It just looks phenomenal. And yes, this is a Touring, so it's got the fancy 18s and a few other visual upgrades. Let's talk about pricing right now. In the US, $21,700 gets you a base car. The Touring is $28,300. In Canada, $24,465 for the base Civic. Yeah, I know what you're thinking, because I'm thinking the same thing. This is no longer that affordable Civic we once knew uh, many, many years ago. But even so, it, this thing is loaded. Look, uh, standard equipment is a 7-inch touchscreen display, 7-inch instrument panel display, like a little digital readout in the middle. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, heated seats, remote start, uh, loads of safety features, including adaptive cruise and lane keep assist. That's in the base car. <laughs> And the Touring, this one, the one you're looking at right now, is $30,265. That kind of makes a lot of sense because you, now you get a 9-inch touchscreen display, a 10.2-inch digital instrument panel, Bose Audio, wireless Apple CarPlay, charging Android Auto, leather, and the aforementioned 18-inch wheels. I mean, final lap, the car looks, looks really premium. 
it's uh, I mean I don't know it makes the CRV kind of look old I don't know why I use the CRV as a comparison but there's something ultra modern and very beautiful about this car okay so uh, let's do the usual walk around the touring by the way is the only one that has that that you kind of don't really need so the touring has 408 liters of trunk space which I think is like 20 or 40 liters less than the uh, EX Sport and uh, the base car but even so I mean the opening isn't that wide but the inside is really deep plenty plenty of room it's not that deep but this is after all a compact car what you do get however is an enormous back seat but this is something now we've become accustomed to in compact cars namely in Corolla or not so much an Impreza or Mazda 3 but still look this is ingress egress is really really easy and that's my driving position there's a good shot of the dashboard uh, the amount of leg room is ridiculous uh, headroom is a little snug maybe I'll try well that was my hand sorry about that um, uh, USB ports in the back yeah, heated seats in the back as well I mean it's it's a huge place that at least two adults can comfortably take place in up front uh, look, the part of upping the game for Honda is just taking fit finish and materials to the next level and you can definitely tell I mean I don't know if it's expensive stuff but it's certainly does look expensive it doesn't look cheap is what I'm trying to say same thing with the design you see there? that's kind of like a herringbone uh, set up right there and even the controls look really really nice and it gets better once you get inside typical Honda seats which are extremely supportive and comfortable so let's slide on board start her up now I have to jump right to actually let's just do this so there's your 10.2 inch display there's the nine inch display coming up online. I do like the fact that this is an actual button and not a, like a haptic or a touch screen feature. Knob, always a good idea to have a knob. Um, eventually, there you go. The best part I think visually about the car inside is the vents, which are perfectly and seamlessly blended into this beautiful decorative layout. I, and better yet, to control the vents it's like a joystick it's completely impossibly fantastic and it looks so good I mean compared to the previous generation car the 10th gen this is this is 10 steps up actually it's beautiful in here uh, there's your wireless charging pad yes I still use a cord because the pad makes the phone heat up a lot and I don't use wireless Android Auto or Apple CarPlay because it always fails on me Maybe it's my old iPhone 10. I don't know. Storage is somewhat limited, although the bin here is pretty big. Uh, door bins are very deep. Oops, that was my elbow. And visibility is quite good. I mean, look how thin the A pillars are from the driving position, and you have that wonderful gap there. Um, look, the interior of this car, thirty thousand two hundred sixty-five dollars, is absolutely premium, and it's very, it's modest but good looking at the same time anyway here's one last shot of that grill with the vents it's just fantastic now is the time though to go for a drive now if you do take an all-new 22 Honda Civic for a test drive and are familiar with the Honda Civic uh, very quickly you will notice that this car feels uh, just better sorted grown up like the design uh, it feels more put together the refinement is now if memory serves the last time I drove a Honda a Honda Accord sorry was a long time ago a regular one the last one I drove was a hybrid and the refinement just the, the quality of the ride seems on par with that of an Accord which is so far removed from the cars that I will always refer to as being the Honda Civic, you know, between the fourth and sixth generation. But that is absolutely necessary given who and what the new Civic compa uh, competes with. Um, the, the structure is beautiful, which enables the chassis fully independent suspension, rear multi-link setup to just do a great job of soaking up most road surfaces 
with relative ease. It's reasonably quiet in here, although right now I'm crossing a bridge, so the surface material is different, but even so, it's not that bad in here. Uh, and also part of the chassis, look, you have to thumbs up for the steering, which is impressively quick, but not sharp and uncomfortable in the sense that it loads up beautifully there's no there's no lull there's no dead zone it's just beautifully on at all times big thumbs up for that brake pedal feels lovely too good response uh, limited or just plenty of usable travel in order to modulate the pedal wonderfully okay it, this is a grown-up honda accord i'm putting or, getting all of this underway is in the first three trims a naturally aspirated 158 horsepower two liter four-cylinder engine now if you want the turbocharged 1.5 liter engine in Canada you have to step up to the touring in the sedan and that will give you a little bit more power than the previous uh, version of that engine so you're looking at 180 horsepower at 6,000 rpm and 177 pound-feet of torque from 17 to 4,500 RPM, which means that when you roll onto the throttle, that torque kicks in, well, you're essentially always in a juicy part of the power band, and the car gets underway. Goodness, it's always so, it just breaks my concentration when I have to talk about a CVT, but look, the, the fact of the matter is that Civic, especially a, a sedan, uh, is just a means to get from point A to point B, albeit the best way ever of all generations of Civic sedans. And it just does a fine job. Look, it works with you most of the time, unless you're a very aggressive driver, then it dislikes you, <laughs> period. But even under heavy throttle, I'm on the floor. The engine does kind of get a little bit noisy, but it's not so bad that you want to tear your eardrums out. It's actually better than decent, I have to admit. And despite driving with a heavy right foot, if you do do that, you can expect to average about seven liters per 100 kilometers, thanks in part to the CVT. It's a slight trade-off, but for 99% of the people who are going to buy a Honda Civic sedan, it's not even a consideration or an issue. If anything, it's just absolutely fine. And that essentially sums up <laughs> the Honda Civic. In fact, that's not fair. This is a much better than fine automobile. Um, it's so grown up that it, the name Civic almost doesn't even apply to this car anymore. But that's just, that's a really personal thing. But if you're stepping out of a ninth gen, for example, and you take this one for a test drive, there is no way in hell that you're gonna say, ew, I don't want this car. I wanna, I'm gonna go look at a Corolla or an Impreza or an Elantra. And that essentially is, is the bottom line, is that the Civic has been the best selling car in Canada for, I forget, 23, 24 years, something like that, and has been in the top three selling cars in the US for decades also. And that's not gonna change. I mean, Hyundai has put forth some immense efforts in recreating the Elantra to compete against the Civic, against the Corolla, the Mazda 3, the Impreza and all that. And, and yes, the, the, the Elantra has gone from zero to hero, but to break beyond the top three, I think it's number three best seller in Canada. Um, with this Civic, no matter how much magic and voodoo they put into the Elantra, it just cannot dethrone this car. I mean, this badge alone brings with it a lot right uh, an assumed reliability record that is nearly spotless although the 1.5 you never know but uh, efficiency strong resale value generally low ownership costs and now the car looks this much better it's, the interior is geez i want to say almost flawless i mean the 10th gen's interior i've never liked the way the gauges are split and the, the chunkiness of the dashboard and well, obviously, I wasn't the only person who thought that. Yes, the joysticks are fantastic. Anyhow, the Honda Civic is king in the segment and king of cars in Canada. And that is, I can't imagine a scenario where that would change. This is the best Civic ever. Ugh. <laughs>